Forget it, Bard. It's so bright out you can't see anything in the sky except the Fox satellite. You listen to me, you hillbilly punk who thinks the world's still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat! <laughs> Interesting guy, man, and uh, you know, he believes it. So, Kyrie, yeah, the earth is flat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, whatever, the earth is flat. that's news. That's news. Here we go. <laughs> you are now tuned into the truth frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently anchored over Raleigh, North Carolina, eagerly awaiting the 2017 International Flat Earth Conference coming this fall. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is in a spaceship, anchored over the Midwest breadbasket. Hello everyone and welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Glues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Check it out at enclosedworld.com or just Google Flat Earth Clues. If you can't find it, that's because you were dumb enough to spend the entire weekend prepping for the eclipse and then hanging out in the blackout zone for a couple days and then foolishly trying to drive home to Seattle just so you could do this show tonight. Because that's what it is. Because it, if it is not uh, August 22nd, 2017, then we are not live. And if we are not live, you call in. You're just going to get a recording. I will listen to them, of course. You won't be able to talk to me live. This will be a call-in show, by the way. For those of you listening to this on YouTube and you want to hear the show live as it happens, please go to the Truth Frequency Radio for the latest schedule. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Quote of the day from the peanut gallery is, An unexciting truth may be eclipsed. By a Thrilling Lie. That's by Aldous Huxley. It's good. I see what you did there, Peanut Gallery. Let's see here. Announcements, announcements. Who's got the announcements? I do. And just so you guys know, I'm I'm going to be powering through this. I do not feel good at all. I, I ate and drank probably too much last night and then just got up. I, I'm totally sleep deprived, but we're going we're gonna to do this anyway. And so I will, and you know what, I'm going to give out the phone number for the, uh, the call-in show tonight because we're not doing a guest tonight. We did those two in a row. Assume that I have not had internet access for at least the last two to three days, which is true. When I was down there, I was just doing the film stuff with the documentary team and didn't even have a laptop and didn't ask them if I could borrow theirs because it seemed like they were busy uploading all sorts of fun stuff. So the phone number to call in, there's two of them, of course. The You can use the 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111, which you all know and love so much. Or the direct line to the station, which is 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998. And I'll also be taking frequent sips of water. I'm pretty dehydrated. So, and if you think I should take a sip of water, if I start talking like this, then please let me know. Okay, announcements, announcements. Flat Earth Conference, get on the waiting list. Sign up for live streaming, press, lie, cheat, and steal. 
the main hotel, I believe, is booked. But you know what? Call it anyway down there. So it, all the details for the, the Flat Earth Conference, which is going to be the, the next really, really big event in the Flat Earth world, is going to be in Raleigh, North Carolina, November 9th. And just go to fe2017.com. You'll check it out. A couple of things. Uh, Patricia Steer appeared in a Houston Chronicle newspaper article. Not the main one, but they were doing a um, kind of a preface one talking about the eclipse. Lots of lots of places were doing it, including the uh, Philadelphia Voice, which I got in, and other people. So check that out when you get a chance. Just type, go into Houston Chronicle and type in Flat Earth Eclipse. You should be able to find that. And this Thursday, it's the Michigan Meetup Flat Earth Bowling at 7 p.m. in Battle Creek, Michigan at Bolero Lanes. Sounds Spanish. That's at 775 West Columbia Avenue in Battle Creek, Michigan. Check the promo on Patricia Steers, Flat Earth, and Other Hot Potatoes YouTube channel for more details. Jeffrey Grupp debate challenge is still in effect. If you don't know what that is by now, ask somebody. I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna assume nobody listening to this are freshmen to the game. The big money challenge, 25k or higher, or whatever, is uh, still also in effect. You can contact Kathy Dunson at perelandra77 at gmail.com. That's P-E-R-E-L-A-N-D-R-A 77 at gmail.com. D-I-T-R-H, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Holes, doing a billboard that's going up near the conference center in Raleigh. Just check out GoFundMe, A Stranger's Guide to F.E. Billboard. It's going to run September, October, and November, the printed billboard. And yes, I see you, Minnesota, calling in. I will try to grab you in just a second. We're almost done with the announcements. We can send people to stand under it with Flat Earth signs when we are there. Also, fun event, if you're into the religious side of Flat Earth, Rob Skiba and Amber Plaster will be doing the TakeOnTheWorld17.com. So it's TakeOnTheWorld17.com, September 15th and 17th in Cleveland, Ohio. If you want more information besides what's on the website, you can contact Chris Bailey at 440-668-6373. And I believe that is all the announcements we have. Let me check the peanut gallery really quick. Peanut gallery sent me an IP address. I'm sure you have some England. Oh, was that a phone number? I'm sure you have some England listeners. I do actually have some England listeners and Australian. But first off, we're going to try. Oh, yeah, Australian one's calling it. Uh, you know what? Because he's calling in, let's pick up him first because I'm sure long distance charges apply. And then I swear I will pick up uh, Minnesota 612 area code. So let's pick up Australia. First call of the night. Australia, are you there? Can you hear me? Did you survive the eclipse that you didn't have any part of? <laughs> Hi, Mark. I'm here. Sorry, Minnesota. I'll, I'll just cut in line here. Sorry, mate. Yeah, I survived. But yeah, we, we got an actual a, um, a penumbral uh, lunar eclipse two weeks ago, which oh. apparently happens every every two weeks before a solar eclipse. Oh, cool. I did not know that. Yeah, so that's something to see. Yeah, that's something to see. But um, I was calling in because it's rocket it's rocket launch day today for Mad Mike. Oh, is it? I, again, I, I'm glad you called because I did not know. I literally have been away from the internet for two days with, with cameras following me for yeah. some unknown reason. Awesome. And what, what are we going to do today? Because, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I think IPS is going to be streaming it. So whoever wants to see it, I think he's going to be doing it live. So subscribe to Infinite Plane Society if you want to see it. Um, yeah, he said it was going to be the day after the eclipse, which is today, your time, isn't it? That was yesterday, um, the eclipse. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly one day after the eclipse. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll be, that'll be good fun. Um, I was. Trying to get onto Jaron, I don't think he did the experiment. Do you know if anyone did any experiments with the um, the focal uh, pendulum during the solar eclipse? You know how it's meant to reverse or go crazy. I do not know. If anybody knows anything, again, I'm I'm just taking calls, fielding what I've missed. I mean, I, I got through most of my emails, <laughs> some of my voicemails, <clears throat> and now I'm just hoping that that people, you know, I, I don't think any anything caught fire recently but uh but the eclipse was was amazing uh by the way i might since you're <clears throat> since you're the first call i might as well mention it <clears throat> oh excuse me hang on water i need water oh, i do not know what's wrong with me other than that i'm really really <clears throat> really really tired the um 
So the eclipse happened, and I was lucky enough to get drugged down uh, to Salem, Oregon, by a Hollywood documentary team. And we spent a couple days down there shooting the whole thing. And I got to tell you, when that thing hit, and, and I know that the entire country, the United, the entire United States could see it, but until you got to that, those last three percentage points, you didn't see anything. Because that's when it just got fantastic, you know, when when the temperature just dropped in the entire area and, you know, the 99 percent, you you see just this little spotlight at, at, in this case at the top of the sun where the sun used to be. And then when it finally goes black, uh, it, it's the closest thing to magic I think I've ever seen. It, it was fantastic. Most beautiful thing in the sky I've ever seen. And, uh, you know, it last sounds for- absolutely epic. Yeah, it was it was yeah. I, anyone that was lucky enough to drive to the blackout zone before I was like, well, you know, you'll be able to see something. No, because the sun's so bright that even at 80, 90 percent, the sun's so bright, you cannot look at it without some sort of <laughs> goggles. But when it goes black, the goggles are useless because it's it's so dim. It's just this in the <laughs> what I'm going to try to point out to people is that what changed for me, you know, when I was looking at it was. It was so clear to me that it was just close. You know, it, you cannot tell me that one of those objects was 90 million miles away and the other one was over 200,000 miles away and they both just overlapped. I look at it and I go, wow, it is really, really cool, but it is right there. I mean, you almost felt like you'd reach up and touch it. It was it was just fantastic. There's so. no, yeah, no freaking way then yeah, one's 93 million miles away or even yeah, 200. No. And thirty something miles away, but yeah, no. I was I was watching the um the live stream from from NASA, and about fifteen minutes like yeah from the ISS, and about fifteen minutes before the eclipse corner made it onto the mainland, and then you you're about to see the shadow. They actually cut the feed, so oh. yeah, and and then they released the pictures after it. So yeah, what's going on there? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm trying to catch up there. You know, what's interesting was we were in a park, probably the in my opinion, probably the best location in the entire country to see it. And there wasn't hardly anyone there because everyone figured out through social media that as long as you were in the blackout zone, anywhere along that path, you were going to get 100% coverage. So you didn't have to go into downtown Salem. But I noticed, well, as it was starting to get really dark, there was a plane at at, a commercial airline or altitude that was circling. And you you don't generally see a plane with contrails go in a circle. You know, they're usually just from some straight line from city to city. And this thing was, and we looked it up and it turns out that's where all the media was. They were down at the airport right below it because that was one of the NASA planes. It was just going in a circle in the blackout zone waiting for this thing. And, and, and because of that, we were entirely left alone out in this park. It was, it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. So yeah, all you media that was covering the NASA thing, you guys can suck it. You totally blew your opportunity <laughs> to, because I mean, there was some great shots. I mean, the people were just going crazy over it, and uh, yeah, NASA. Yeah, and I've I've heard a few things already. I haven't seen the pictures. How one of their main pictures they released was actually from a few years ago, from a d- another part of the world. Yes, yeah. for some reason, and they showed the ISS transiting across the sun. And I'm going, really, that little thing that, you know, it was ridiculous. It was it was absolutely so. But they're gonna they're gonna keep yeah. pushing the narrative. Yeah. So it's it's a joke, yeah. Unless we keep yeah, putting it out there, no one's no one's gonna think anything less of it. So, hey, did right. you see any stars when 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 it was totality? No, no, it got real dark, but we didn't see any stars. It it, it turned dark, dark blue, but it never got to that point where stars would show up. Now, of course, when it turned completely black, I'll be perfectly honest with you, because you have such a limited window to stare at this thing. I wasn't going to, nothing was going to keep me from looking at it. So I wasn't spinning around a whole bunch looking at the stars. I think, I think I glanced for a second, but no, no, there was, it was the, what you noticed was as like with a lot of the country, as it got over about 60, 70%, it started cooling down and cooling <clears throat> down. And then finally, I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was a 90 degree day in Salem, but when the eclipse was happening, it was only in the mid sixties. So it was, uh, it was, it was fascinating, yeah. but no, I didn't, I didn't awesome, see the yeah. stars. Really, I, was, I was looking for the stars and I was also looking for any spaceship armada. So 
<laughs> coming in behind the sun and then Planet X, you can't, yeah, you can't forget to look yeah. out for that one too. Yeah, I, 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 will say, I will tell you what I've told other people. I'm going, look, it, it, nothing happened and that was a total waste of production value because it was so cool. You could have really, really turned it into something. I mean, that's that's Spielberg 101. <laughs> anyway. Any, what else? Hey, I won't take up your time, but yeah, I've, I've got a I've got a quote for the peanut gallery. He's going to like this one. Right. Um, it's for, from someone that you know quite well. Um, it, it goes for every one hundred dollars of the flat Earth Antarctica GoFundMe raises, I will sing Joe Jackson stepping out, and that's from uh, Mark Sargent. <laughs> nice. And I will eventually. Mark. I will eventually have to do this. He's 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 never going to let me go on this because <laughs> every single show now. He keeps punching, you know, he says, oh, sing it, sing it. And I actually got, which was well, through me, was the guest I had on last week. He actually kind of hummed it, you know, at the end, you know, like, la, da, 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 you know, in a redneck fashion. So I thought that was kind of fun. <laughs> he was great last week, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, yeah, it's reached 100, it's, it's 100, it's $106 now, Mark. So are you going to do it this show? <laughs> uh, no, not the show. I feel terrible. But I, I promise I will do it soon. I, I just can't do it today. I feel absolutely lousy. So, uh, it's, all right, well, well, we'll hold you to it. But yeah, no, I no, I, I will. Soon I'll, and, yeah, I'll, only... I'll do it. I'm a man. <laughs> of my life. But uh, yeah, today is just no. Right. Day. The road trip was, I, the road trip wasn't too terrible. I'm just feeling some sort of side effects from something I ate yesterday. So, <laughs> there's only an hour and forty five minutes to go. So hang in there, mate. All right, man. Thank you. <laughs> All right, have a good one. See ya. Bye-bye. Okay, phone number to call in. We're going to pick up Minnesota here in a second. Uh, is 720 897 6111 or 213-233-3998. Fill me in on what happened. You know, Tell me about what's going on in the eclipse or what happened in Flat Earth that I might have missed because I probably did miss it. Because, again, I've been out of Internet um, ability for the last two days. Just trying to focus on uh, the documentary stuff. Okay, let's pick up uh, 612, shall we? 612 area code. What's going on? Hey, Mark. West Day, Flat Earth News, and the side. Uh, Wes. There we go. Why? Really? I, no, I, have, I had to come in early. Um, actually, I, I dialed the wrong damn number. Uh, I wanted to, I was doing the do what I normally do, which is uh, hit True Frequency Radio and listen to your show until I get to work. And here I realized that I dialed your number. I'm like, oh, oh well, do you do okay, you have well, the um, do you have the listen only number? Yeah, yeah, I had it under your name, and I don't know why I clicked on your name. I was supposed to be clicking on True Frequency Radio. Oh, no worries. No let big. me let me let me rattle it off real quick. Figured, those... well, hang on. Hang yeah, on. I figured I'll get it get it out of there early. Uh, it, good move. The The phone number to call in if you just want to call in and listen to the show from your phone or whatever is 641-793-7117. That is 641-793-7117. How are you doing, Wes, by the way? I'm doing good. And I'll tell you, Minnesota, it was so weird. I, I get up at like 930 in the morning. I get out. I look out. It's a beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky. I'm like, oh, this is going to be so cool. Hopefully I can see something and uh, go back inside because then I, I find on the news they say it's not, we're not going to see nothing until uh, between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. I'm like, seriously? 10 and 2? It's so only... around 10. Yeah, go ahead. What's that? No, no, so, go ahead. So around 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, I go back out there. Clouds everywhere. It, it looked like a gloomy winter day. We didn't see shit. <laughs> it stayed that way all day long. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. I'm so sorry. Chemtrails, chemtrails, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm hoping to hear some good news from people that in the in the blackout path from like Boise, St. Louis, uh, Nashville, and somewhere in South Carolina. But uh, well, that... I know for a fact. I know for a fact that Candy will definitely be calling in. Uh, she's seen a lot. She had a live stream going on. Uh, nice. So we got to watch some of that. And um, then there was a the big argument in the chat about looking at it and going blind or ruining your eye. I'm like, that is so bogus. I, I have seen two 
eclipses in my lifetime. One when I was a kid, and one in 19, what was it, 83 or 93? Um, 93 or 94, I can't remember which. And both times I looked. And I, I see just fine. <laughs> I question that, given your your filmmaking abilities, but that's all right. Right? You know? Yeah. Huh? I was waiting for that. Oh, bang! What, okay, what does that peanut gallery say? I know he's got something ready for me. Uh, well, peanut gallery's got two quotes. One for the previous caller, which says, "Smoking will probably kill me, but so will natural selection." That's from Carol Bryant. Oh, well, that one should have been for me. <laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe it is for you. Maybe it is yeah. for you. Uh. I and told then, him I wasn't calling in tonight. <laughs> and couldn't resist. Could I messed you? with well, him. I, again, no. I didn't know if I was gonna, actually going to do the show. I'm right after this thing. I'm not even going to upload it tonight. I'm just going to go to bed and, uh, and and just crash because I'm so sleep deprived. I was so amped up. I got like no sleep before the day before the eclipse. But it was. Oh, yeah, I it was, can imagine. It was to- It was totally worth it. I I I could. I cannot oversell this thing. If you get a chance, year, you know whoever it is, years down the road, I think it's twenty twenty four is the next, the next one. But it's gonna only it's gonna yeah. come north to south. If you have a chance to be in the blackout zone, do it. Totally oh, worth it. Be awesome. It's it, it really cool. Um, and yes, the peanut gallery said yes. That quote was for you. So you know what? I'm gonna read it again. Smoking will probably kill me, but so will natural selection. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Great. So you, right, so you actually were just. Retired, huh? Yeah, I'm. Well, I drove six out. It was supposed to be like a four hour drive, but there was construction in multiple parts between Salem, Oregon, and Seattle. But I made pretty good time. The film crew, the what? The film crew was supposed to be bringing you. The film crew, well, they they brought, we took two cars. And the reason is, is because they were going to go back up to Seattle Tacoma Airport and one of the film crew was going to, he has a brother in Beaverton, Oregon. So uh, I left early because I wanted to, uh, you know, catch that gap between the rush hours and then they waited. They just took off a little while ago back to LA. They left at six o'clock Pacific time, but it was great. We, we shot that hell out of that thing and it was perfect, perfect conditions, no clouds, I mean, hell, we were, we were shooting the Eclipse and the NASA plane right in the same park, so it was fantastic. Um, nice. Lo- I, I, unfortunately, I do, have to, I do have to let you go because I want to take at least one more call before the break. Yeah, and- no problem. I'm, I'm going to just give a quick shout-out to uh, J.L. Forbes. Talk oh. to her tonight on Facebook. She's doing well, even though her site is down. She's not doing anything right now, but we're going to schedule another interview, and hopefully you can join us. Uh, you know what? I will certainly try, and if I don't, tell her hi from me. Tell her a big, big hug. All right. All right. No problem. All right. Take care. Okay, man. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, let's pick up New York. New York, you're going to be the call before the break, and then we'll pick up North Carolina after the break. Are you there, man? Hello. It's uh, Mark from New York broadcasting to you live from a hospital bed. <laughs> Oh yeah, what the hell happened to you? I don't. We still don't know. I've been what? here since last Friday. Yes. Holy smokes! I'm, you're actually I'm in. A, you're actually in. You've been in the hospital just about the same time that I started doing the the whole eclipse thing. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm really upset. I didn't get to see it live. Well, I did. Did watch all the TV coverage and one fully disgusted with the mockery of regular TV, ABC, NBC, and them. It's like, wow, you guys are disgusting. Yeah. And it was interesting. Not one video or any footage I, that you could see an object. There was nothing in front of it. Like, it was weird. My wife even took some pictures because we were in the 70% range. Yeah. So she went up back with her camera and my son, and he made his uh, Fruit Loops box thing and watched it in that. And she got some good photos. And she she brought it up to me as soon as she said it. She goes, hey, look at these pictures. I didn't see the moon before that. Where did it come from? <laughs> I'm like, good question. 
we see well, it I mean, the day. It, it supposedly it came. Day. It supposedly came from the northeast corner and started consuming the sun from there. Uh, that's what I saw anyway. But yeah, we were looking for it the entire time and never saw it. So interesting. Hey, yeah, not, uh, let me let me strange. do this real quick because we got we got three minutes left to the break. I'm kind of curious what um what are the symptoms? What, what's 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 going on with you? Um, I'm, it might be. I thought it was tick-borne related. I don't know. I do have. I think I have multiple things. I have pneumonia. I had 103.9 fever. Oof. That finally broke today. Oh, good. Uh, they actually let me eat some food. They're going to check me tomorrow, make sure I didn't tear something, because somewhere along the line, somebody said I threw up blood. I don't know. I was really out of it. Wow. I was really, really out of it. Um, I was trying to pay attention to not getting dehydrated. That is the sure. worst. Everyone out there, don't let yourself ever get dehydrated. Not good. So not good. Agreed. Oh, it's the worst pain ever. Yeah, horrible. If, okay. if you have an ex-wife you want to torture, dehydrate her. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's the worst. For hey, by the way, the, pe- the, the peanut gallery has a quote for that. Uh, okay. It, uh, being sick is just your body's way of saying you're way too awesome and you need to slow down so everyone else can catch up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank nice. you. Yeah, and I want to apologize to everybody. I don't even know if anybody went Saturday. I'm so upset. I really well, am. I, I wanted to be there. Hey, health, health first, man. You know, I, I know you missed the meetup, you know. but at the same time, you know, you gotta you gotta take care of yourself. So don't. No, that's what I know. You're right. You're right. Uh, I, I any any shout outs? So I hate to do this to you, but the music's gonna go in like thirty yeah. seconds. Any any shout outs you got? Okay. Uh, just to everybody, uh, especially Dexter. He was the one person that contacted me for sure that he was going, and I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. I I tried to get a hold of him. I tried to send out emails. I posted it everywhere that I wasn't going to make it. Yeah. And that I was in, it was kind of funny because I wasn't even sure if I did it. I was like, did I do that? Did I, I don't remember. I, I was really zoning. Wow. You know? um, well, I'm, so I'm, I'm sound, you sound pretty good. So I'm, I'm glad that, that yeah. it didn't get really, really bad. Oh, heck, we got the music no. coming. Um, hey, man, get be, all right, be better. Going. And uh, we'll, we'll talk right. soon, okay? Talk about Earth X. Earth X. E A R T H E X. I don't know okay. what that is. Okay. Something with uh, European Council. No hate. No hype. No, 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 no fear. We are T F R. Frequency Radio. Welcome back to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, and this is my post-eclipse wrap-up show, where I'm going to try to power through, even though I'm running on single-digit hours of sleep for the last few days. I mean, like, like maybe three hours for the last three days. It's been awful. I mean, I think hazing requires more hours of sleep than what I've gotten recently. But anyway, regardless, enough of my pain and woe and suffering. Let's go back to yours. Let's pick up a phone call. By the way, the phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Or you can try the backup number, which is 213-233-3998. 213-233-3998. We got North Carolina on the line. Let's see what's going on there. North Carolina. You're on with Strange World. <laughs> I was about to say, are you done crying yet? <laughs> oh, Candy. 
do you, I don't complain much. You know this. And uh, <laughs> in this case, I felt like absolute crap. And when you're stuck in traffic on a long road trip. Oh, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> oh, God. I, I mean, I'm looking at the sign. It says Seattle, 112 miles. Seattle, 90-something miles. Yep. I'm going, I'm going to die. I'm probably going to die. Yep, and on the, bumper on to bumper, gridlock the whole way. I did it, too. I drove to me and Karen went to South Carolina to see 100% totality. When you said it was the closest thing to magic that you had ever seen, that's the best way to describe it. Yeah, tell give me give me your blow by blow. What what happened? Wow. So um I I live streamed it with my camera. I sent you the link to the video. Um and we're gonna play with it later on some more because I haven't even watched my own video yet, but other people had and edited it and put it on their channel. There's some freaky things in the sky. And I've noticed a lot of people posting videos online where they're seeing um and and I saw this too and my kids too, all of our kids were filming it with their phones and saying, Oh my god, wow, look and so I looked in my phone and it was doing the exact same thing. You can see the the eclipse to the naked eye looks like a big circle until it's you know, 100% eclipse. It's not the moon. I can guarantee that. But um, you can't really see it at all with your naked eye. Well, in the camera, it was showing a crescent yellow object that was opposite the eclipse. Like it was looking at itself in the mirror, but it was like down below it. And then it couldn't have been the solar flare, the lens flare, I mean, because there was another one directly opposite of that in every shot, which would have been the lens flare for that object. It was so weird. And then in Karen's video, um, she filmed it with the P900. I don't know if I 100% yet believe in Rahu and K2, but I'm really starting to think that we might have video evidence of something like that. Really? Um, yeah. That's, that's you can very see, like, exciting. Right at Right at totality, I sent you the link, and I told you the timestamp. It's like four and a half minutes through okay. when it eclipses. Um, it's in her P900 and in my regular camera. When I took a picture, you can see these red, like flares, all around the sun. It's so weird, and they're circular, to Neat. basically. But one of them, that the one that's up in the top right corner. And the one directly below the actual eclipse, but it's a little bit to the right. In that section, you can see something getting, it's not stationary. So it's not, this isn't caused by a flare or the lens or anything. This was a steady camera and it, um, two of the red things became a cult. Like one of the, the one in the top right, you can see the circle moving up it like it it takes over it like it it occult some of that red whatever flare that was so it's it's crazy to watch like wow. and, I, and my camera caught some really crazy things when the sky went dark did you notice you could see venus and jupiter no i was not i really wanted to stare at the eclipse itself so that's all i did i didn't spin around so, at, at all really so did you, when you looked at the eclipse um, before totality, maybe about halfway through till the, the rest of the way, did you notice all the hyperboloids and the toroids around the sun? It's definitely the, electricity. I did not. Like if you look at it without the glasses. I barely you, looked at it without the glasses. Because you I didn't want to... missed a big part of it then. Because, really? I mean, a giant ring around the eclipse of donut shaped color spectrums and and it was they were moving they weren't oh man well, i mean i looked I started when it, screaming when it, when it when it went a hundred percent i did not use the glasses obviously but before that i was using the glasses for most of it because it was just too bright where we were it was uh oh yeah was, the sun was there it was very bright you had to look you had to, i i made it a point for everybody, I said, I'm not going to use those glasses. I'm going to look at it and see what it looks like without it because I have a feeling that they're offering these glasses everywhere because they want to hide something. Not, I mean, yeah, it lets us see it, but they sure. have to have some kind of reason for doing things. They're not just going to help us out. Right, right, right. So that, 
you know, I was like, there's, I was, my neighbors were actually dying laughing at me because uh, I said, there's got to be a reason why they tell us not to look at it. I want to see what that is. And they're dying laughing. And they're like, yeah, you idiot, because you're going to burn your retinas. And I'm like, I don't believe that. And they say, Wednesday or Tuesday, don't come to me and say you're blind. <laughs> right. But I was trying to tell them about the other eclipse, too, in 2024. And they were like, no way. We haven't had one in 99 years like that. No. They said, well, who would you hear that from? And I said, even NASA says so. They started dying laughing. You know, NASA lies. You can't tell us that NASA lies and then tell us NASA told you. <laughs> right. Yeah, 2024, so, uh, of course, interesting that that one's going more or less north to south, and it intersects the this eclipse in one no, spot. No, 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 it's going south, it's going southwest to northeast. Oh, it's going the other direction. Right, I meant to tell you that when I called, because I heard you say that to the first call. Oh, okay, okay, that makes right. sense. And it, But it's going to be crossing, I, I still got this part right, where it's going to be crossing the Madrid fault line. Right. And I could sit here for another 20 minutes and tell you everything that's significant. With the, remember when I put that message the other day, I found out I've been stuck on this for two whole weeks. The significance to the Bible and other events that are happening and right. revelations and the, oh, man. So so tell me real like, quick. I, I don't I, I, I we do have to take it and we'll talk some more, I'm sure. But where where were you when you saw it as far as total blackout was concerned? And were you in a large group? And was it the coolest thing ever? It was definitely the coolest thing ever, by far. It, me and my kids are still saying it, like, every hour. Mom, that eclipse, though, isn't it? I can't believe it. Like, it, it was that amazing. I have no words for it, really. It was just, wow, was all I can say. We were in um, Delton, South Carolina. Yeah. And it was a very remote town. I mean, there was probably a hundred people there living i don't know it was very strange and eerie it was very small but uh there was probably like 30 people there maybe 40 it wasn't mm -hmm. that many we were at a little park a playground nice nice that's so really cool the and clouds and, scared and, us how, for a minute what um did you see a lot of other people? I mean, did, did, was that path, was it was it advertised much? I mean, where I was in Oregon, people just spread out all over the place. They didn't they didn't concentrate yeah. any one place. They just like, okay, if it's in the blackout path anywhere, I'm good. So they just drove to any open area. Right. Yep. But um, I did hear on the radio on my way there. <clears throat> um, I usually don't listen to the radio, but my kids didn't want to hear that. That they said that. Columbia, South Carolina had 5 million people there at that time. And that was at about 8 o'clock in the morning when I was leaving to go. I believe that. But I where believe. we went, we went a little bit out of the main city, which was Greenville. And we drove to like a pretty rural place. So there wasn't that many people there. It was nice. It was really nice. And everybody had the same. Oh, and you know what else we filmed? The shadow bands. Oh, the, the snakes. I went and bought some poster board. Yeah, I bought poster board and, like, taped four pieces of it together so I could get a good um, – it was so exciting, though, Mark. It was so hard. Like, I, I missed the second set because I was so, like, captivated. I couldn't even – I couldn't even, you should hear our video. We had to cut the sound out of everything because we were so like, oh, my God. You know, everybody was so amazed. Wow. We were embarrassed, you know. <laughs> well, you weren't, you weren't alone. The groups that I was with, I mean, I was in a park with hundreds and hundreds of people. And, yeah, they were all losing it. And and it's amazing oh, that, 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 that this thing can generate that much awe because, again, we, we've grown up now with amazing special effects. But there's that. When you look at this, you're going, yeah, it's a whole other level. So it was, it was fantastic. I've never seen that in a movie either. And you know what? Like you said, I keep telling everybody because, you know, in my location here where I live, it, they got a 98% coverage. But I said even 99.99999 does not compare at all to 100%. Not yeah. even – it's like comparing this grass blade to a choo-choo train. You can't – it's it's – 100 percent different yeah yeah because it transforms i mean it's just the yep. sun gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer but then it completely transforms into something else and yeah it's 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 gonna be tough i'm gonna have to come up with different ways to describe it to people 
Right. I keep say I keep trying to explain this to people, and I get so excited. Like they're like, "Calm down. It wasn't that great." Oh, yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. But the, the whole reason I called you. Did you hear what NASA did during the eclipse? I know you got to go, but this is why I called. Okay, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. What do you got? Okay, NASA sent up 100 weather balloons into the stratosphere, and they put cameras. And apparently, that's the closest environment to Mars supposedly that there is so they want to be in 35 of these balloons in 25 different locations only being locations of to- total visibility like totality mm-hmm. of the eclipse they dropped they, because it was something to do with the solar um the solar the solar something to do with the solar eclipse and the energy it was going to put out which right. is obvious by the shadow bands but they are dropping this very highly resistant, um, highly resilient bacteria. It oh, I did hear about 257 this. 257 degrees and still survive. And they're saying that it's safe to humans, that it, it would, it's um, not going to be a problem. But bull, sh- bull, how do they know that? And how do we know that? Right. Either it's a scam to make an antibiotic because they already have the antibiotic made or vaccine or something or it really is going to be a big outbreak because it's been so long in its time. And maybe these really are the end of time. Mm. Fascinating to think about. And we'll, and we're going to, we're going to end yours on that one. That's uh, could, could something be coming as a result of this eclipse? Very possible. Thank, thank you, Candy. We, we will talk soon. And um, she, uh, peanut gallery wants me to remember, he's got a quote for you, but apparently I'm not supposed to say it on air. So. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. He, All right, man. he wants me to be careful. <laughs> nice. All right. Hey, you have a good rest of your evening, okay? You too. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. Okay, let's pick up... Pick up Josh. Well, I don't know if it's Josh. In Alhambra, California. Oh, wait. Am I supposed to say the quote, Peanut Gallery? Say the quote. Say the quote on air. Okay, if Candy's listening. The quote is... It, it is the nature of all hypocrites and false prophets to create a conscience where there is none and to cause conscience to disappear where it does exist by Martin Luther. All right. There you go. That's what we got. All right. We're going to pick up Alhambra, California. Hey, 626 area code. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Mark? How's it going, man? Uh, it's going pretty good. I'm hanging in there. It's still a little sore and woozy, but, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to power through the show. What, uh, what's going on where you are? Uh, nothing much. I caught a little bit of that eclipse from LA. Yeah. I got to talk to some people about flat earth while they were looking at the eclipse. Nice. (laughs) Nice. That was pretty cool. Right on. Well, because they were wondering about it going backwards also. Like, that was one of the biggest questions they had. They were like, that doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, well, if that doesn't make sense, do you check this out? And I started throwing other facts at them, and they were just like, I never thought about that. And they were just completely blown away. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Kind of cool. Good for you. Some flat earth activism. But, uh... We are thinking about, or not thinking about, uh, another, uh, on the 1st of September, uh, we're going to be meeting up at the, uh, Victoria Gardens food hall. Cool. All right. Well, let's, let's promo it right now. uh, And so, so that's Los Angeles, Los Angeles flat earth meetup. Go ahead. Give me, give me, give me the details. Just say it. Yeah, it's uh, Rancho Cucamonga, um, the Victoria Gardens Food Hall. Uh, it's basically like the food court there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're just going to meet up at 7 o'clock and see where it goes from there. Because there's, it's a pretty good sized little area. Um, nice. So, yeah. I uh, figured, see who shows up. I uh, Figured I'd let you know what's going on because a bunch of people that showed up last time were from listening to the show. Great. So, 
and they were really great people to talk to and I would love to see them again and we would all love to see them again and that'd be great. Fantastic. Send email me. I won't be able to make it tonight. I will try to make it tomorrow. Uh, email me the info and I will update and put out a new trailer for you on my channel. Cool. Uh, I've been trying to get a hold of somebody in the, uh, cause right here next to Pasadena, there's the, uh, Bill Nye's Planetary Society thing. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, and a buddy of mine actually belongs to that thing. I am trying to tell him it's a cult, but he won't listen. <laughs> well, but, yeah. uh, I've been trying to like get a response from them and I'm trying to play it from the other angle as far as like not letting them know that I'm a flat earther. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like playing it off as like, Hey, let's go set these guys straight. And I would love to have like three or four of them show up and then just all of a sudden become flat earthers. That'd be so awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah that uh, off, let me know. I figured, I figured there might be a way to infiltrate uh planetary society. Right on. That'd be cool. Flat earth infiltration. I dig it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, dude. Um, and then these meetups, I, I really hope that more people start doing the meetups just because it's a, a great way to meet people. And then through meeting people, you network with people, you know, like, right. Right. Uh, I mean, somebody may be like an insurance agent or something like that. And just, you might just be talking to them about something completely different and, who knows? Maybe they can help you with whatever current situation you got right now, you know? Absolutely. Are you uh, kidding? That's, that's, that's straight out of Fight Club, which is you, you network, and then you convert more members, and sooner, you know, before you know it, all of a sudden, world domination. I like it. Oh, real quick. Uh, one of the biggest things I wanted to tell you about was uh, since you've been kind of offline the last couple of days, mm -hmm. uh, check out Check out NASA's shadow of the eclipse. NASA's shadow. They, the, of the ISS. Eclipse. Yeah, the ISS supposedly filmed the shadow of the eclipse going across the United States. And really? Just do yourself a favor. Yeah, look it up. Because All at right. first, I thought it was like, I thought it was kind of like halfway, uh, like a joke at first. Like I thought maybe it was someone that did it themselves. But then yeah. I was watching earlier, they had some interview thing from the ISS where they were talking to the astronauts and uh, hmm. they were talking about how busy they were yesterday about the eclipse and everything and how, and they happened to mention about the shadow footage that they took. And I was like, wait, so you guys really did do that? And that was really yours? Because... I was under the impression that the shadow of the eclipse was supposed to be really small, right? It is it really small. The United all, States? Yeah, it's only The one to... they show from the ISS yeah. is like, it, the shadow is taking up like three quarters of the United States as it's going across it. Really? So they're like contradicting what they came out and said about the eclipse before the eclipse ever got here. Interesting. In fact, I think Peanut Gallery just sent me a rough shot of this. Let me take a quick look. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a piece of crap. Yeah, I mean, it's only a Gigantic, 70 miles. right? Look, I, I was in the total blackout path. I mean, it's only 70 miles wide. So That shadow's going across like three states, like, at a time. <laughs> uh, I hate them so much. So, yeah, I mean, they, they can't even keep their own story straight, man. That's That's horrible. Terrible production value, which is why eventually the war will be won by the true, exactly. the, righteous, the flat earthers. Yes. Truth, dude. That's all. Truth. <laughs> I hear you. And anytime, anytime someone asks me, like, well, what does it matter? And I just look at them and go, you know, the average person I've known my whole life has never liked being lied to. Has never liked being lied to. Right. And I go. 
we've all been being lied to on a massive scale our whole lives. I go, that doesn't bother you at all? Like, I mean, it's just really weird. Yeah. People are strange, dude. <laughs> I absolutely it reminds do. me of that, that door song, People are Strange. People uh, are strange when you're a stranger. Yep. Exactly. But uh, if anyone wants to get a hold of uh, me about the uh, the meetup, uh, they can go ahead and shoot me an email at uberflatters at gmail.com. Awesome. Or uh, check out uh, SoCal Flat Earth uh, meetup group on Facebook. Cool. And that's about it, bro. Uh, right on, just a quick shout out to uh, all the people I've met at the meetup last time and all the people that I'm meeting through doing this regard, like period. Uh, yeah. Uh, cool. All right, man. Dude, your show gets so many people hooked while they're in my car, though, man. It's so awesome. Thank the other you. day, I had a lady that turns out she works on heart valves really? and stuff like that. Like, yeah, she works uh, with the heart valves and everything. And I was listening to the the where you were reading the letter with the industrial valve expert. Mm-hmm. And when she got in my car, she's all, did he just say valves? And I go, oh, yeah, they're talking about the ISS and the, the valves and the seals and the actuators and everything that goes into moving parts of stuff. And she goes, Oh, I thought it might've been part of what I do. And then she told me what she does. And I go, well, it's all the same like science though. Right. And she goes, yeah, it's all like what he was saying in his letter. It's all fluid and motion transfer and stuff. Like, right. That's all the same, no matter what, no matter where it's going, no matter what it's doing, there's only a certain amount of science that, can be done on it and uh so she understood what i was talking about and it was kind of cool because when she got out of my car she just like stops and looks at me and goes you're probably the deepest uber driver i've ever had and i've had a lot of uber drivers nice it's awesome that's great man but all right man uh have yourself a good show i hope you're able to finish powering through it man i'm gonna i'm not gonna stop i'm not gonna well i hope i'm not gonna stop i don't want to jinx myself i'm not gonna stop i'm gonna keep going Hey, like my grandpa always told me, you lay down and then you die. So don't lay down, man. <laughs> nice. Thank you, man. All right. You have a good rest of your night. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, Mark. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, a couple minutes to the break. We're going to pick up a caller and 253 area code. Here we go. Two f- oh, oh, oh. 253 area code. Are you there? You're on Strange World. Hi, Mark. Sergeant. This is Daryl D. Marble. It's D Marble. Holy smokes. Whoa, whoa. What's going yeah, on? Uh, and and by the way, oh, not a whole lot. Well, no, you can if you want. I mean, we can keep you through the break because uh, if you got oh, something. Oh, yeah. What's no, up? What's no, no, nothing, nothing, nothing too pressing. We haven't talked in a while, buddy. I mean, you know, I was just <laughs> wanted to catch up a little bit. Cool. Yeah, we're tight like that now. <laughs> so we are. Yes, we are like that. I, I, for people that don't know, I had a chance to to meet Daryl down at the Seattle Flat Earth meetup with Patricia Steer and Paul on the plane and a lot of great, great people, and it was it was fantastic. So if you want to, well, in fact, we'll plug you before the break. We got about a minute before we go to music, but then I'll I'll keep you on for a little bit. The um, fantastic. Uh, your channel is called it's and hopefully I'm not going to screw this up. It's D period space marble. Yes, sir. Or you can just, I think, I think I found it just by typing D marble. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it's not, not too complicated. I just, mm, I'm here to make stuff simple. In this it's, it's, community. There you go. And it's extremely fast growing. I got to give you kudos for that. I've been noticing your subscribership has been jumping by leaps and bounds. I, noticed that earlier and i'm kind of freaking out but, are you i was i was wondering you know because there is there is a bit of a a, a a syndrome that happens when when people start grabbing subscribers that quick all of a sudden you know are, so are you are you still trying to stay humble or are you uh starting to like think of what church is going to be built in your name <laughs> no no i'm still going to be the humble guy that, that's why i made that video the other day explaining who i am you know I, i'm not going to get the big head out here you know, and I'm still calling, calling people that I meet on Instagram. 
Pause. That's great. All right, stay with me. Three minutes. We'll come right back with you, okay? All right. This is Truth Frequency Radio. The wicked ones obviously under heavy, heavy, heavy Masonic <laughs> influence. <laughs> Welcome back to Strange World. The truth is often stranger in fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, and on the line with us is Flat Earth Superstar, soon to be cutting a new album and obviously winning a few Grammys after that, D Marble. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, no, 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 I love you, man. You're great. What uh, I, I, everything you're doing is fantastic. Love your energy, love your enthusiasm, and I love the fact that you remind me every day how much eventually the Disney's going to sue me for uh, imitating Shrek because everybody keeps calling you the best looking man in flat Earth. So that's fantastic. It really helps my self esteem. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, no, because I, 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 I don't know. I can't. I mean, yeah, I can say like George Clooney's good looking, but that's only because he's in Hollywood movies. Most guys, because I'm yeah. straight, I can look at them and go, yeah, I guess they're good looking. I don't know. I'm not, you know, I can't, I can't judge that. But apparently people are, are fawning. I'm sorry, fawning. Yeah, fawning or falling all over you. What uh, do you do you get proposition more now that uh, you are best looking man in flat earth? <laughs> What the heck? No, no, I don't. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, there are God. people out there. I know. Come on. You you cannot tell me that, that you haven't had. Okay, well, let me ask you this. And I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything, but let's have fun with this. So I get emails. Most of the emails I get, like straight up emails, not, not the ones. And I don't know if you give out your email address. But most of the emails I get are people say, oh, you know, thank you for doing this. And thank you. You really opened my eyes. And it's that's great. It's uh, appreciated. I rarely will I get an, uh, an email that says, oh, I'd really like to, you know, one of those, it's kind of a solicitation, you know, thinly veiled. <laughs> tell me, tell me yeah. you get more than I do. Make me feel better. Oh, okay. I've gotten a few of them. All right. I'm not going to lie. Um, and, it's, you know, it's, now are you, are you trying to stay <laughs> kind of, uh, kind of off, you know, kind of distanced from that? Or are you, I don't well, do you, you don't give up much of your personal life. You don't have to here. Well, I, I did, you know, in that last video, I was, I was very open uh, as far as what, what I have going on. As far, but eh, a relationship, I don't know how well that would work right now. Because I just recently uh, lost a girlfriend because she's like, well, God, God, she was like, you don't have time. <laughs> you don't have time anymore. Cause I'm, it's, it's always prep for the next video or I'm right. responding to messages or emails. I mean, you, you know how that goes. Oh, I do. Some, some I do. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you probably I know. Do, so, because I, I, know. I, I, I've said, I go, look, I can't, I can't date a non, well, one, I can't date a non flat earther anymore. And even oh, if I, even if I was dating a flat earther, which I have, I, it, there's there's a certain time factor, especially yeah. The more videos you do, it's like look, I got I got a routine, I got stuff I gotta do. Sorry, you know. So you yeah. kind of need you kind of need a partner in crime is what you need. True, true. 
So I don't know if you, if you have any suggestions. Well, no, I'll, let me quit. No, they're, um, they're out there. <laughs> they're out there. No doubt. No doubt. Why are no doubt. you? Are you, uh, are you are, is this one of those things where you're, I know this is kind of awkward because you're doing, you know, we're on air and everything, but are, you yeah, know, do you, do you find, do you find me kind of like a, like a good match for, for you in this case? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mark. It's not, it's not like that. Not even. Damn it! See, <laughs> see, there's no flatter love in Mark's world. There isn't. Hey, I, 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 I love you, man, but I don't like love you, love you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> but like, hey, bro, got love for you, buddy. You know, I hear like, like that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not going to be sharing a locker down at the YMCA. Probably not. Not, not, not at all. Not at all. I mean, uh, maybe come park the van so we can hang out at your place sometime, you know, over the weekend. But just, just so we can go, you know, over flat earth stuff. Gotcha. But I don't know, man. It, it's, it's been complicated as far as the relationship goes. Nah, not so much. Uh, uh, also, I'm kind of living in a van, so uh, you know, it, it'll take a special, it'll take a special kind of woman to deal with me right now. That's true, but at the same time, you're mobile. I mean, you know, you don't, you, you're, you're fairly string free. So, you know, if we, we, you know, woman's looking for someone, guy with pretty little, few complications. Remember most of the guys out there well, and women, they, people come with luggage and you are about yeah. the, the, I mean, the, uh, to use that line from uh, the George Clooney movie, um, up in the air. I mean, your, your backpack is pretty, you know, pretty light. You can, you can do just about anything you want. I do enjoy that flexibility. Uh, yeah. I can tell you that uh, just being able to get up and go whenever you know it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, but, there's yeah, there's, man. So. Yeah, what? Uh, so, well, I, about, I, uh, two quick okay, questions ahead, for you. Ahead. Two quick questions. One, yeah. uh, did you know? Because I was not up in Seattle. I was down in uh, Salem, Oregon. Did you did you catch any of the eclipse? I did. I decided to stay here in Tacoma because large crowds. I thought about it. That's really not my thing. And traffic, really, really not my thing. So I decided to stay here. Plus, I'm like, uh, you know, we're, we're in the conspiracy community, you know, we're kind of paranoid. So I'm like, I don't trust the people that are in charge. So they might do some crazy stuff while sure. all these people are clustered together. So, no, I'm just going to stay here. All right. uh, luckily, my paranoia didn't play out and everything seemed to have gone just fine. Um, nice. But, but man, yeah, I just decided to stay here, and uh, yeah, I did catch some of the eclipse. And let me tell you what I saw. I, I you know, decided to disagree with the scientific idea of don't look directly at the sun, and or definitely don't look at the eclipse with your bare eyes. Right. I, I stared at the sun. You know, no shades, no no special NASA sunglasses or anything like that. And I'll tell you, Mark, what I saw. It was it was the sun, and whatever was blocking light from the sun showing. Yeah. Yep. It, it was like invisible, if if that makes any sense. It was like it, it. I could see through whatever was blocking the sun. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. You're not the you're not the only person to say that, as you can imagine, and a lot of flat earthers. Really, uh, really, we're going along those lines. Candy, when she called up tonight, she was she's all over the place with this, but yeah, she was saying some of that same stuff uh, that there's a lot of freaky things that are going to come out over the next week, a lot of interesting videos that people are going to microscope. So that is interesting, though. That's really, really cool. Did um, I, and, and, you know what? I got a chance to see when I was down in Oregon uh, was the uh, the billboard that went up in Salem, the uh, by oh, wow. Flatter flatearthoregon.com and mm -hmm. it w it was great uh we didn't we didn't made sure we'd shot that on the first day not actually eclipse day because the traffic as you can imagine was nightmarish but yeah. it was it was beautiful you know it was a beautiful thing to see and there it is you know towering in all its digital glory rotating through slides and and uh, it, was, it was it was just wonderful to, to see you know the community the community doesn't even have to it's not like we've got an uh, like an organizing council or anything the community just has right. its, has the, has the, its arms in every you know nobody lots of people don't know each other and the, yet it's still functioning very very efficiently so I love it, it it's it's great to be part of this whole thing and watch how uh, 
you know, people are starting to come together. And I mean, this whole movement is just, these are exciting times, man. Oh, these yeah. are exciting times. I feel, I feel like something big happened yesterday and we're only just now seeing the beginnings of the manifestations of what's going to come. Yeah. Uh, in the next uh, month or so, because yeah. I mean, still, you know, NASA still doesn't have any answers for us yep. <laughs> as to why that happened. You know, I, I'm just briefly alluded to this in my last video. Uh, why is it that timeanddate.com is showing the sun and moon as being small and local? Uh, also, why are they showing the moon as being larger than the sun? Interesting. You know? Interesting. I mean, it's all it's 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 falling apart. The yep. whole thing is falling apart, man. You know, so, I've been, are, I've been kind of, I've been kind of calling for. You know, I've said that that our civilization eventually. For me, it felt like you know, like a like most plays are three acts. You know, act one, act two, act three, and movies to that mm-hmm. effect. And I said that we've been waiting for sort of like the act three opening, and I I feel at this point that the eclipse could be that opening. You know, that opening uh, instrumental from the orchestra. It's like, okay, here's your here's your act three. We start now. And everything from this point is just going to get weirder and weirder. It starts. It starts with a great thing like this. I, I believe you. I'm on the same page. Yeah, I uh, felt a sense of calm after yeah. he took it over. I can't. I can't explain it. Um, you know, I was on the panel with Dredd and the guys, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I mean, I dude, I just got really sleepy. I was like, all right, guys, I got off off. I got to take a nap. I'm sorry. And, uh, I mean, last night slept like a rock, had some pretty vivid dreams. It, it was, it was weird. It was, it, it just feels different now. I can't, can't put my finger on it, man. Yep. Yep. I, I understand what you mean. It's, I, I felt weird ever since last night. Hopefully I'll get over it, whatever it is. Uh, part of it anyway. We'll see. I'm going to get, uh, right after this, I'm just going to crap after the, uh, after the show. I'm not, I normally build the show, but I'm just going to crash <laughs> and then start, start <laughs> right. tomorrow fresh because I'm dying. Uh, any any uh, shout outs you want to give before I move on to whoever else is uh, out there? Oh, gee. Uh, shout out to the whole Flat Earth community. Um, nice. I'd like to thank everyone for being open minded, keeping your keeping your heart open to, to new possibilities with our reality. It's good times. Just enjoy the ride. It's about to get interesting, if I understand correctly. Fantastic. Love it. Love it. Cool, man. All D. Right. Marble, everybody. Make sure to check out his YouTube page, D. Marble, or just looking look for the best-looking guy in Flat Earth. You'll, it's, he's obvious. So. It'll be the guy with the braids in the shades. <laughs> nice. All right. All right, man. All right. Th- thanks, Mark. You have a good night. You too. Right. Okay, that was D. Marble. Let's pick up another one, get right to it, so that I don't have to talk as much, because I'm sure I may pass out eventually. But you know what? I've got 45 minutes. Pretty sure I can make it. Even though those sirens you hear in the background are not for me. Let's pick up 616 area code while the sirens get louder. 616. See, hung up as I was going to pick it up. Grand Rapids, what are you doing to me? I try to pick you up and you disconnect from the line. Normally, I'd call that a rookie mistake, and you hate to see it, but well, we'll have to see if he's going to come back. Okay, you know what? Let's go out the phone number again. We haven't done that in a while. Phone number to call in is 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. Or the backup number, in case that number doesn't work, is 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998. I'll be playing all your smooth jazz favorites into the evening. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, let's pick up Akron, Ohio. Let's see what this guy's got going on. And then we'll pick up, oh, geez, yeah, I told people to call in. Now they're MetLife Incorporated. You're calling from your company phone? Oh, whatever. 330, area code. You're on live Strange World. What's going on? Hey, Mark, how you doing? Uh, this is uh, Fireman Mike from Akron, Ohio. We've, t- we've talked a couple times. Hey, Fireman Mike. What's, go- what's happening? Oh, not too much. I, I kind of... Uh fouled up during the, the eclipse. Um, I had pulled up uh, one of the eclipse maps online and uh, noted down the time of, you know, uh, the partial beginning and and um, the maximum obscuration, which in Akron it was at like almost 81%. Mm-hmm. 
and the end of the you know the time of the end end of the partial and uh i don't know if it was because i was on pain meds or what but i i'm the day before i got bucked off of a horse i, I got kind of dinged up and uh by the way the earth is flat and it's very very hard uh, but anyway, i was on i was on pain meds monday hadn't slept much Sunday night because when I got to the pharmacy, the, the store was open, but the pharmacy was closed. So I, oh, no. I, didn't, I didn't pick up my pain meds till Monday morning. Uh-oh. And I got a couple of dinged ribs and 10 stitches in my chin, a sprained ankle, deep bruises all over. This mare really beat me up even before she threw me off. <laughs> but uh, she hit me right between the eyes with her head, and then I hit the saddle horn with my chin, split my chin open, and that shook me loose, and then she... She bucked me off, but anyway, life so, life of a of a country man. Yeah, yeah, of a well, I'm sort of half city, half country. But <laughs> like I had this the, down to a science, yeah. and I was I was gonna go I was gonna go out to the barn Monday afternoon, mm-hmm. and I had zeroed in on one of these uh, uh, set, you know so called satellite maps. Yeah. On uh, on the internet, and it really was amazing. I mean, it looked like somebody took a. a photograph of, of the stable property from like maybe 500 feet altitude wow the detail was amazing and i zeroed in right on the gazebo that i would, would be sitting under and i got these times and mm-hmm. it was you know rounding off the times 5 p.m for the for the beginning of the partial and this is actually in kent ohio okay but uh so beginning of the partial was 5 p.m full obscuration at 6.30 p.m., and then it was over at 8 p.m., and those were rounded off times. So I was all pleased with myself. I thought, well, I'm, I'm in pain. I don't feel like doing much. I'll just go sit out there and experience it, you know, out at the barn. Uh-huh. And uh, so about 4.30, I'm headed out, and I had noticed that, you know, the sky had gotten weird. It got this greenish, bluish gray, and clouds look kind of fuzzy. And so I'm heading out, and I run into my neighbor, and I said, hey, you ready for the eclipse? And he, he said, what are you talking about? It's over. Well, here's the, the darn times on this computer site were universal time. They weren't. Oh, Eastern no. Time. So since I'm all goofed up on pain meds, which, I mean, I was good enough to drive, but I didn't catch that. So I have only experienced it looking out my window and going out on the deck from time to time, you know. Yeah. But I didn't get, I didn't get to realize, you know, I, I guess here – you know, the, uh, whatever the difference is between Greenwich mean time and Eastern standard. Oh, right, out, right, right. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get to go out and say, okay, here it is two thirty or whatever. This is the maximum. Right. But, but I did notice, you know, so I kind of blew it, but eh. anyway, so that's that. Okay. But I got uh, you. No, it's all right. It happens. I'm sure there were, I was talking about, there was probably people on airplane. In fact, I saw an airplane fly over me, a uh, big commercial jet over Salem as they was going blackout and i was thinking there's wow. probably people in that plane that don't even know and and yep. yet the pilot the pilot's probably going to announce it the pilot's probably bug-eyed himself going and to your right the hundred year eclipse and and the person <laughs> yeah. had no idea no idea it's almost wow. the sky goes dark and he's looking out it's like holy smokes and he's like wondering why all these people are plastered against the windows uh, uh, but you couldn't, but you couldn't book a flight like that and bank on it because you know airlines, you know, you a few, few right, minutes off. You, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, but I can tell you, well, I was in the blackout zone. It was, it lived up to expectations. I I had no idea, no idea yeah, there was. No, if if I if I had it to do over, I I think I would drive because the blackout zone from us was just probably. Oh, six hours away in Louisville, Kentucky, or someplace like that. Yeah, and it really wouldn't wouldn't have been that much. I I kind of wish I had done that, but there's one in seven years. Yeah, and so uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, of course, I that one's, your that health one's going southwest and northeast, but right. But I'll you know who knows. Yeah. Well, but I anyway. hope you I hope you recover from your uh, your your unfortunate horse accident. <laughs> I'm, I, well, that's a story for another time. You got other things to cover, but yeah, I could, yeah. A bit off, I could chew. But um, all right. Uh, anyway, well, but I appreciate it. Thank you. And hey, I'd like to say too. Uh, I hope Mark in New York is feeling better. Yeah, me I, too. I, 
Yeah, I, I know you do. I know you guys are good friends, and I just yeah. want to say that. I enjoy listening to him when he calls in, and I hope he's... He, he kind of missed it, too. And uh, Yeah, he I, missed it, know, too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope he's doing better. But anyway, I'll let you go, pal. I know you're busy. All right, man. And I, I will talk to you again. Okay, have a good night. Okay, you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye now. Okay... What are we going to do? We, get, we can take at least one more caller until the final break. The peanut gallery is bugging me. What's he saying? He's got a quote. Seeing Joe Jackson wake me up. No, no. This is a question of wake me I want to go back to sleep after this is over. I really, really do. Uh, but peanut gallery's quote, and we will pick up... Uh, is there a phone call? Nope, nope, not that one. Uh, when I was young, I forgot to laugh. Later, when I opened my eyes and saw reality, I began to laugh. And haven't stopped since. That's from Wes, Flat Earth News. Nice. And I should also mention the quote that Peanut Gallery gave for Wes, which was... One second. It was something like, if Wes goes blind, it won't be because of the sun. That's from the Peanut Gallery for Wes. So thank you for that. Phone number to call in, 720-897-6111. That is 720-897-6111. 6111 or the backup number 213-233-3998. That is 213-233-3998. Shout out to everybody in the Flat Earth community. If you don't mind taking a moment or two and sending me your positive energy because I feel like utter crap at the moment. I, I My stomach's sore. I'm running on no sleep. And I'm still doing the show because I care. And the show must go on, to be honest. A uh, phone call tried to come in from California. Did not make it from 714 area code. Might want to try the backup line if uh, you have problems with that. And what else? What else? What else? Let's do, I don't really want feel like reading an email right at the moment. And Peanut Gallery always gives me crap because you got to read emails and email shows. You shouldn't read emails here. But, and I will catch up with emails. I, I promise. It's just getting worse and worse. As you know, as it was inevitable. The the community just grows and grows. Till I mean, right now I haven't read an email. We're going all the way back to July third. So if you sent an email to me after July third, I have probably just skimmed it at this point. All right. Here's an, here's a phone call. It's coming in. Can we grab them? Let's try five o two area code five o two. Are you there? Hey, I am here. Oh my lord! Is this? How are you doing? I am doing well. Is this subject matter expert Brian Burton, master gunner for the United States Army? Well, now, he, now retired. Yes, it is. How's it going? Yeah, then? retired. What are we? Aren't not are too, you, bad. too bad. Wait, are well? You're out officially though, as of like real, real recently, right? That's good. So what? Uh, what's going on? What? What did I miss while I was? Running around with film crews. Uh, film crews. That's good. No, not so much. So I, I'm checking something new out. Unfortunately, with Eclipse, because me being where I am, can't get that much of it. I did see a little black object passing through it. Sure. So I have a question for you. Me? Okay. You know, you, yeah, you. All right. Because I haven't heard you address it. Okay. You know the whole tectonic plate movement? Right. Right? Right. Right. So North, the North American one's heading in makes Rocky Mountains, right? Yeah. So what made the Appalachian? I don't know. What do you think made the Appalachian Mountains? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, don't know. I don't. Point. Because the land plate's pulling away. Hmm. Hmm. That is interesting because I, I mean, one, I haven't followed tectonics that much, especially with the flat earth model. I mean, I know they, they, they work in my opinion, but you're saying that the, the Appalachian mountains are more of an anomaly. Well, because the Appalachians are technically in the middle of the North American plate and the European plate is pulling away from the North American that East coast. So if they're pulling away and if the collision of the Pacific causes the Rocky mountains, what made the Appalachian mountains come up? Hmm. If they're pulling away. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I, I honestly don't. If anyone has a theory on that, uh, please please let me know. I, I that is one of those mysteries. I haven't really I've really focused on it though. 
Well, you right. know me, I go around and find the odds. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, thank you for sending those pictures. Were, were those actually um, uh, authentic pictures of the... Uh... They are horrible. They are terrible. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how the moon's shadow is smaller. Oh, yeah. Don't get me started there. In fact, I actually got a chance to sell, tell that to a few people when I was down doing the Salem thing. By the way, we had about a minute to the break. The... Um, uh, yep. which, which is how, yeah, again, one of the biggest problems is how do you take a 2000 mile object diameter, 2000 miles and shrink its shadow down to 70 miles? How do you do that? That's a, a you know, let's say we round up to 2100. That's like a 97% increase. That's, that's find me, show me how you do yeah. that on the ground with, with any sort of light in a, in a, in a dark room. Show me how you do that. And here's the funny thing, if it's a ball and curved, then that light will actually expand further across landmass because it's curved and the object can still go that far plus further. Yeah. For mileage counted on the curve. So yeah. it should actually be bigger. I know. We all know well, that. I feel that's... ripped off because I didn't get to see it all because I only had the small part down here in Oklahoma. So. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's it, it's this thing's going to stretch out now for weeks or people are going to dissect this and it's going to be very, very interesting. So, uh, any yeah. shout outs? I'm waiting we're... for your hero. The shout what? out to Zulu. I hope he's feeling better. I hope he gets out of the hospital. Yeah. For a shout out. Cool. And I'm to Tyson to explain the smaller moon thing as you go to break. Nice. Cool, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. Hey, You're listening to the Truth Frequency Radio Network. No hate, no hype, no, 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 no fear. Welcome back to Strange World. I'm your host, Mark Sargent. And yes, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album, Night and Day. We'll be continuing on playing all your classic rock favorites and potentially the end of the world. But first, some phone calls. Let's pick up Santa Ana, California. 714, area code. Are you there? Hey, Mark. It's Eric from Orange County. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Hey, it's been a while since I've called in. And uh, with the eclipse this week, I just saw so many things that I wanted to share and, and get your feedback on. I, I emailed you on one of them uh, about the path of totality being only 70 miles wide. Fascinating, and, isn't it? Well, you know, if they're going to tell us the moon is 1,800 you know, miles in diameter, right. a shadow will never reflect smaller than itself. It'll only be its exact size if it's touching the object from which the light is shown upon or it's bigger. So mm-hmm. by default that no one's told me that how can the moon be anything bigger than 70 miles across if that's the case. It just, right. it's mind boggling that no one has asked that question right. in mainstream. It's, yeah. <laughs> um, and then regarding the ISS and that shadow path, I, have, I didn't see it yet, but I had the ISS streaming during the whole thing. And, you know, this is like the freaking Super Bowl. It should have been for NASA. This is like they should have been pre gaming. They should have had commentators. They should have been. I saw none of that. And they're doing stupid experiments. Yeah. And you kept losing view. And they weren't even anywhere near where it needs to be. Like they've known about this forever. This is like one of the biggest scientific things about space that you can think of. And they don't reposition the ISS to capture every moment of that as, as in many different ways. It just blew my mind. And so I don't know how as I was watching the ISS live stream, that they weren't anywhere near it. They weren't filming that. How did they all of a sudden they come up with this? It's a bunch of crap as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. 100% agree with you, man. I was there. I mean, yeah. when, when I was in Salem, Oregon, all the media was over at the airport, the nearest airport, because NASA was just flying a commercial airliner in circles. 
to to capture the eclipse. Yeah. Well, that's that's the best. That's what you got, and because of that, they missed all the great crowd action. Literally, I did not see yes. a I did not see a single piece of mainstream media even scope out the town, which just weeks earlier they said they were worried that they were you know the town that Salem was going to burn down. So yeah. yeah, what you're saying is absolutely right. NASA should have covered the hell out of this thing, and they didn't. Yeah, in fact, the the nope. rumor and was the, that, what they did, Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just saying what they did cover was from the ground. They had people on the ground talking, and they're showing the same footage that everybody else had uh, of looking up in at it. And I was like, "We're paying you how many billions of dollars a year, and this is what you, crap you've given us is is something yeah. from the ground. You're not in space, NASA. What's up with that?" Yeah. Uh, by the way, ignore the siren that's behind me. It's my ride. The um, <laughs> it, yeah, fifty million dollars a day, net twenty billion dollars a year. NASA gets paid, and yeah. the best they can give us is ground shit. Oh yeah, it's it, it's it's yeah. awful, awful. It, it's 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 remarkable. And uh, the other thing, so I'm in Southern California, and we should have had seventy percent, uh, cut between seventy and seventy five percent. And I was working from home, and so I kept going outside and. Mark, I was looking up at it. First, I was trying with a couple of sunglasses that I didn't want to put on the ones that, you know, they wanted you to wear just to see what I'm seeing. I'm like, ah, I'm not capturing anything. So I got my Android phone and I started holding it really close to my face, had the camera go and started taking pictures before, during, and at the very end. And what started happening was from just seeing the sun, then remarkably, there was a small green dot that was starting to have a black dot, smaller dot covering it. And as I took pictures throughout that entire time, it was moving. It was going from the bottom right and it was doing an arc up towards, so it was going from say Southeast arcing up through the center towards Northeast. Mm -hmm. And it was making that green dot, which, you know, you think, well, is that the sun and is that the moon in front of it? And so, well, maybe it's some weird camera thing and that's what's going on. But mm -hmm. Tell me why with me being in California, that the black dot finally moved off of the sun in its entirety when it passed through South Carolina. I, right. I, I'm talking 3,000 miles away. So why, if, if there is some sort of thing, why is the sun in the West Coast reflecting what is going on with the eclipse in South Carolina? That, I, I don't understand how that can be. And other, I, someone else put up a picture. They're like, what's that? And she's in Florida and hers was pink. Mine was green, hers was pink. And I'm like, this is... It just, and then when you, when you looked at the, if you really zoomed in, I, I, I made the, that green dot bigger. When you mm -hmm. looked at it, there were either four or five bright white dots emanating from it in a pattern. And it was very clear. So it, they seem to be like LED, if you will. So it, mm -hmm. it makes me really question what the, the whole thing is with the sun itself as a light and heat source and where it is and how it's operating and how it's going over us and what, you know, it, it's, I, I just can't explain. I'd love to see if there's anybody on the phone a lot smarter than me that might be able to, you know, reflect on what that could be. Um, oh yeah. No, it's, just, it's yeah, here we are, you know, just 24. Well, maybe pushing 36 hours later almost. And yeah, it, no, there's going to be a lot more questions coming this week. Definitely where, where people are going to be analyzing footage and comparing notes. The, the, the best thing about, the internet and social media is uh, the fact that people can share everything that's out there. But I think pretty quickly we're going to be able to paint a scenario with what's going on. Because, yeah, if, every, people are – I keep hearing this now over and over in emails and phone calls and, and texts where they're saying there's something strange happened. I don't know. It, did, any, you yeah. know that, that, did anyone else see it, what, what I saw? You know, we it's uh, it's fascinating. So yeah, if if anyone yeah. knows what's what's going on there, feel free to chime in. We'll talk about this next week as well. Where I'm gonna I'm yeah, gonna yeah. really start digging into this. Cool, and and also the distance. You know, we've talked about this before about how yeah. far is it really away. I saw something on uh, was it? It's you probably know him, Richie from Boston or something. I, I yeah, think yeah. His channel and and he put up where he was looking through his P900 at the moon at just normal things. Then he zoomed in on it and that thing was 4k high def. You could see it like it was right there in your backyard, but then he then puts it across the horizon across uh, Boston to the Prudential tower it zooms in the same way and can barely see the Prudential tower. And I've, I've just got a super little backyard telescope and I've seen the same thing. I can look in the backyard at night and see the moon like it's right there. Yet I look across the horizon at the neighboring city and I can barely see anything clear. So right. it, it's, it's bizarre. 
Um, yeah. And yeah. I'm sure other people will keep seeing that sort of thing. So anyway, I just said, uh, I felt inspired to give you a call. Uh, I've been away from listening to the calls every week, so it's good to be back. And uh, well, thanks. just wanted to share. All right, man. No, no, it's great. I'm, I'm glad you did because, again, the, the, I, in fact, I was wearing a, sh- a shirt yesterday for the eclipse. It's called, uh, it was called Flat Earth uh, blackout 2017. And basically we're claiming the eclipse is our own. You know, we're saying that the flat earth is not a, it's not a globe eclipse. It's, it's a flat earth eclipse. And the, mm-hmm. and that's no more evident than what I saw there yesterday. I saw, I was like, Oh yeah, uh, these, these objects are really, really close. Then people are starting to wake up to it. So thank you for sharing. Sure. You would just a quick question. So do you think that potentially the moon is under the firmament? It's it like potentially it's sure. It's enclosed. Sure. Right. I mean, that seems like that would make sense. Why not? Uh, why, why wouldn't it be? I'm not it's very, very possible. Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, great. Anyway, thank you. I don't want to take up too much time. I know you've got a lot of callers, but I appreciate you taking my call. All right, man. Hey, you have a good rest of your evening. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. All right, so I've got 17 minutes until the show ends, and then I just pass out. So we're going to take as many calls as we can before then. Let's do 510 area code. 510 area code. You're on. Strange world. What do you got? Mark, what's going on? Pittsburgh, California. Pittsburgh, California. Every time I hear it, it throws me. What's what's happening in Pittsburgh, California? Oh man, not too bad, man. Uh, I got a couple of comments. First thing I want to say is, is uh, I really, really love my job. Uh, I think I'm finally at the point where they say if you get a job that you love, you never have to work another day in your life. Mm-hmm. I feel that way. But I'm, but I must say, when Tuesday come, I can't get people off my bus fast enough, <laughs> <laughs> so I can try to call in. Nice. So uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, first, let me give you my uh, observation from California. Uh, just listen to other gentlemen. It was pretty interesting there because I was uh, looking. At first, uh, Jaron, he was running a, a law feed the whole time. And out there where he was at, it was like complete cloud cover. And I was going through the same thing at first, too. And I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to see it. But eventually, by the time I got to my job, uh, the cloud pretty much opened up and I had full visualization. And nice. uh, like most people, I was just trying to see it with, with my naked eyes. And I mean, super, super bright. The sun is like super bright or whatnot. So once I got to work, a uh, couple of uh, uh, our dispatchers they had a couple of glasses. But I actually looked through some uh, welding glass. Oh, neat. How that, yeah, how that yeah it was pretty awesome. We covered it gave it a green tint, and it was a little bit more vibrant, you know, it was a, you know, so I really enjoyed that experience. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because this is why I love this community so much, because, you know, you, you, you when everybody is sharing things, you know, you, you, at some point, you know, it's, it becomes a reality, you know, because if this person says something, then, you know, it's got to be too authentic, because I thought maybe my phone was tripping, mm-hmm. but I myself took multiple shots, and I saw a dot off to the right for my distance and I took multiples and the dot just kept moving. It was it was it was a little bit towards the top and uh and, and for, for my hand it looked a, it looked a whitish and then moved off to the side. I thought it was my phone. Hmm. But just went to the other gentleman and then listening to Candy and the things that you know, yeah, so and obviously, you know, it wasn't full totality, but still it was very, very interesting uh within itself. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and I mean just to have that 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 shade factor going on it just gave it like a real melancholy type of feeling yeah it was it was, it was, it was, it was cool to have that experience nice that's awesome awesome that's yeah. great yeah. great and stuff then, and then the second thing the second thing uh, i got because i got a couple of comments you know i normally try to get off real quick no 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 take take time it's, so, it's, the, it's the end of the show you're okay we got okay okay so I had a couple of uh, 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 brothers in the faith that I fellowship with that I have been sharing this information with a long time. And you know how you just got to plant the seed and, and just let it and let, and, and, and let it manifest itself. Uh, manifest itself. So on on Sunday we went out playing basketball together. And after we all got done, it was like, yeah, you would have been uh, 
pretty uh, 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 interested to hear the conversation that we were having on yesterday. Our sister was uh, had us talking about the round up, flat up discussion. I said, oh, really? Yeah. And I can only imagine when she brought it up, he was like, man, I know, man, my own boy was saying he's been trying to show me this stuff for the longest, and he had he ain't really been feeling it. So we sat out there, talked a little bit, and uh, yeah, so now his nose is wide open, and obviously, you know, anytime you get somebody up interested, interested in it, it just gets you a charge to one. And so I'm just, I'm calling people, you know, it just gives you, you just give you a sense of urgency to want to share with more people. And, you know, the more you spend time in this, you learn how to approach different people depending on where they come from, what their beliefs are, whether it's from a scientific standpoint or whatever the case might be. So to mm-hmm. hear them come out and actually, you know, be interested, yeah. And so we had a car wash uh, Saturday, and I'm over there talking to a bunch of folks then, and they were like, wow, you know, a lot of things I was bringing up that they never thought about before. And, you know, so just had a lot of people interested and because uh, I was telling everybody, I was like, yeah, I'm going to a conference. So, you know, naturally they're going to be like, okay, what conference are you going to? I'm going to my first air conference. Oh, really? I said, yeah, Raleigh, North Carolina. And uh, once again, it was videos I was sending to people, but I didn't know if they was watching them or not. But it's right. they have been. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's good times, man, real good times. Right. And we got to blow up, we got to blow up somehow Max Kellerman. Because every time he brings up Kyrie, and I don't know if you know, but Kyrie got traded to, uh, to Boston Celtics, just to let you know. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, Zara Thomas went to, uh, he went to Cleveland. But anyway, every time he brings up Kyrie Irving, he always talks about flat earth. And it's fine for him to, you know, to make flat with comments. But the last comment he made about, uh, I want to say like maybe three episodes ago, he said, if anybody believes in flat earth, I'm just saying, yeah, that's just flat out stupid. I'm like, okay. And every time, he, he always has to invoke the word planet Earth and so on and so forth. Somehow we got to blow this news out because he's, you know, a uh, right. good guy. I like, you know, I like the work that he do, but we got to blow that dude out because if he's going to keep on talking about it, we need to be bugging him about it then. I, th- I think that's the only right that we do that. <laughs> that's great. No, no, and, and I encourage anyone that, that can reach out to him. If he wants to talk with it, we, you know, yeah, we absolutely should. Uh, we should light him up, blow him up. Eh, I don't know if we should actually, you know, just blow him up into pieces. No, 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 no,
And I don't mind reading a uh, an email before the end of the show. I really don't. I mean, I feel guilty enough and peanut gallery shouldn't say no because there's some nice people that write emails. This email is called shooting stars. Uh, Mark, I have never observed a shooting star originate low in the sky and travel upward to a point somewhere overhead. They always originate higher in the sky than where they disappear. People in the Southern hemisphere see the same thing. If we lived on a sphere, then a shooting star that I see traveling towards the horizon would be observed from the Southern hemisphere as originating at the, at the horizon and traveling upward. Is this not proof that we do not live on a sphere? Regards, Lane. Thank you, Lane. And yes, I, I absolutely, we, we've talked about this a few times, which is you, you say not only to stars, but airplanes. Remember, if, if you're going over the curvature of the earth, eventually an airplane will look like it's diving into the horizon. And same thing with stars. When's the last time you saw a shooting star look like it was going straight down and and land? Never, as far as I can tell. So, uh, phone number... No, I'm sorry. That was um, Zulu1. He is actually still on the line. Hopefully, he's listening from his hospital bed, and hopefully, he is not going to die. And I can totally relate to him right now. And I know Candy's probably saying, stop whining, you big baby. It's like, all right, fine. This email is called Mad Mike Hughes Oil Portrait. Hi, Mark. I just want to tell you that I watch your videos every day and that yours were the first Flat Earth videos that I happened to come across about a year ago. I'm sure you are aware of the upcoming Mad Mike Hughes rocket launches. I am a fine artist painter. I got the idea of painting Flat Earth portraits because of my interest in the subject. I just finished an oil portrait of Mad Mike. Here is in my YouTube video of it. I actually included the that portrait in the slide somewhere. Not right this second, though. I'm planning on doing several more portraits of prominent FE personalities, so don't be surprised if, uh, to see one of you. Oh, heaven forfend that somebody else is going to paint me and, again, possibly risk Disney copyright issues because I look very much like the character Shrek. Lovable as he is, he's still an ogre. By the way, I left extra space above Mad Mike's head for lettering because it might be turned into a poster print advertising his launches. Anyway, I thought I ought to let you know. Keep up the great work. Thanks. Great. Fantastic. Six minutes left. Last chance. If anyone wants, wants to call in before the end of the show, and I don't, it doesn't have to be wall to wall calls. I'm only saying if you want to call in and save me from reading because Ferris Bueller style, I feel, I feel a little woozy. This one's called More Tables to Come by Flat Earth Builder. Uh, let's see. Hey, Mark, I'm listening to Hot Potatoes, and I have to tell you the story. I couldn't believe you said that about bull, that, that bully being cut in half by a train. Now, this is no crap. When I was in fifth grade, I had this bully break my favorite purple thick pencil I had. It was my all-time favorite pencil. No one had a purple pencil line like that. Anyway, his name was Bobby Grandy, and he was playing around the trains, and he got to the end, and at the end, he got his foot off, cut, his foot cut off when the train was connecting. When he said that, I instantly thought of that, so I do believe in karma. And that's from Corey from Flat Earth Builder. It's awesome. Oh, we do have some phone calls coming in. Uh, let's pick up Oh, let's pick up Ontario, California, because I, uh, well, let's pick up that one. So 909 area code, you might be the last call of the evening. What's going on? Hey, uh, it's been a while since I talked to you, but you, you remember when we went and put that uh, little cell to put on Facebook when people were bad mouthing it and, and go get the reward and stuff? This is DP anyhow in hey. Hey. Montana, California. Oh, that's okay. okay. And and the question came up a while ago is that do you think that the moon is uh, okay. under the firmament or is that I think that was the, the uh, that was the question I I mean I think it's got the potential of being under the firmament why firmament and why not okay uh, Genesis chapter one verse starting with verse fourteen uh -huh. then God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and okay. let them be for lights in the firmament for the heavens to give light on earth and it was so then god made two great lights 
the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night, he made the stars also. And on verse 17, he said, God set them in the, in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. Oh. So I would have to say, as what scripture what says, it this? says that what is this? the sun and the moon and all the stars are underneath the firmament. The all right, then. Geocentric. I like it. Okay. <laughs> With that, I'm going to leave it, and maybe you can get one more in. Before okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for the chapter and verse. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, we're going to pick up uh, 330 area code. 330, you might be the last call of the night. Hi, Mark. Uh, uh, Mike again from Akron. Hey. Uh, heard, heard the fellow ask earlier about, you know, what might have created the Appalachian mountain range. Yeah. Uh, I, think it was, I think it was the flood. I mean, um, the flood wasn't just a flood. I mean, the earth opened up and the, and the springs in the earth came up and uh, they kind of rolled up some mountains. And I don't know the details about it yet, but um, mm -hmm. uh, tell your pal, tell your pal, or if he's still listening, to uh, look into the flood because okay. uh, it ex it explains a lot of things. It, it, it explains all the uh, strata of fossil. It explains things like the formation of the Grand Canyon. You know, all, all of these uh, 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 geologists and whatnot, these uh, secular scientists, they talk about the Grand Canyon, everything being created at, at this real slow pace, but they, they never, ever take into consideration cataclysmic change, yeah. which is what the flood was. But, you know, the Appalachians, uh, I don't know if there's a tectonic plate right there or if it's, or if it's the one just off the Atlantic, but... Uh, when that spring cracked up because the earth was flooded from the skies and from the, the uh, water that was in the water table mm -hmm. when the earth cracked open. And perhaps, and I don't know, I'm still looking into it too, but it's a good question. And, you know, perhaps the Appalachians just didn't get piled up as high. But whether you're talking about the Appalachians or the Rockies or the Himalayas, I am convinced that all of them are like 6,000 years old. Hmm. And uh, but but tell your friend to look into the flood as, as I am, you know, and I don't know for sure, but it is fascinating. Okay. So, anyway, I, just, I will anyway, do. just want to just want to pass that along. Thank you very much. Okay. Take care, my friend. Right. Bye, bye bye. Bye now. And that, my friends, was the last call of the night. So let's do some quick shout outs of our own. Thank you to everybody that called in this evening and everybody that emailed me while I was gone and all the phone calls and the text messages and special thank you to the documentary team, if they are listening, that grabbed me from Seattle and took me down to Salem, Oregon to watch the total blackout, which was perfect conditions. I think we'll call this, um, this episode the, the um, uh, Flat Earth Eclipse Recap. 2017 flat earth 2017 eclipse recap anyway um come back next time you know what? I'm, I'm trying to come up with a different ending but come back next week because i'll be here same flat time same flat channel thanks guys oh get well zulu Geocentric Earth? <laughs> nice. I had to make a new one. What are you doing? <laughs>